So question one, we've got a vector function of one variable, it's defined here, and, it, the, and we're um, asked to consider the function and it's the curve associated with that function. We're asked to compute the unit tangent vector to the curve, prove that the curve is smooth, and calculate the arc length of the curve from the uh, point associated with t equals 0 to the point associated with t equals pi. So let's, um, let's have a look. Uh, Here's our vector function. So firstly, what is, what is the curve associated with this f f function? Anyone know? If I was asked to sketch it, what would it be? A spiral or a helix or a spring, a coil, whatever you want to call it. So let's just recognize that. Part A says compute a tangent vector to the curve. So how would we, a unit tangent vector. So how, how, how would we compute a tangent vector? Anyone remember? Differentiate. Differentiate right, that'll give us a, a, a vector that's um, a tangent to the curve and then I can normalize it. Just the derivative. So we go through and we differentiate in a component wise fashion. So cosine's going to go to minus sine, sine's going to go to cosine, and t is going to go to 1. Okay, so that's a tangent vector. So let's think about um, whether or not. It's a unit tangent vector. Well, it's not, but we can easily make one just by looking at the magnitude and then, um, I guess, dividing by the magnitude. So you square the components, add them together, and take the square root. So this is going to be sine squared cosine squared plus 1. Now, in this situation, we can use just our trig identities. This is going to be 1, so the magnitude of the tangent vector is constant. It's always root 2, no matter where you are. That's not true in general, but for this helix, it's a nice property. So, our tangent vector it's just uh, yeah, let's put a hat in there. So it's just this with a factor of 1 on root 2 out the front. OK? On the difficulty scale, pretty low. I, I expect you to know how to find a tangent vector and how to normalize it. That's pretty, that's pretty easy stuff. Oh, yes, R dash. Thank you. OK. All right, let's have a look at the second part of the problem. Part B. Prove that the curve C is smooth. 
Now, that might seem like a lot of work, but it's not too bad because you can use what you've got in A to do this if you really wanted to. So what do we need for a curve to be smooth? Okay, can anyone remember? What are the two conditions we need for a curve to be called smooth? Yeah, so the, um, the, der the derivative of r needs to be a continuous function. Yep, and what else? That's right. So the two conditions are r dash has to be continuous along that curve, and r dash can never have a zero. That's what we mean. Okay, when I say ze never zero, I mean never the zero vector. Okay, well let's actually have a look at what we've computed in part A. We've already computed the R dash in part A, it's here. Is this a continuous vector function? Yeah, it is, because sine's continuous, cosine's continuous, and one's just a constant, that's continuous. So, yes. Because each of the components are continuous, the whole thing's continuous. Is this ever the zero vector? No, why not? Because of this fella. Okay? So, it's quite easy to show from part A that our curve C is smooth. So, let's, let's just put that into words. Now, you, of course, you don't have to write all of this down in the in the exam, what I'm trying to do here is give you some solutions, but also explain what I'm doing in, in, in a little bit more detail. Okay, that's usually enough. I, I'd be happy with that. So if I put those two things together, I get C smooth. Can anyone think of another way of showing that the derivative vector is never zero without looking at the components? I've calculated also the magnitude. Now this is never zero, okay? A vector is a zero vector if and only if its magnitude zero. So that's another way of doing it if you can't do it in a component-wise fashion. Cool. Okay, so what's part C? Part C, calculate the arc length of the curve section from t equals zero to t equals pi. Again, this looks like a lot of work, but it's not. You can use what you've calculated in A to do this essentially in one line. So let me just go with C here. So the arc length say L is just the following. So A and B are just numbers in this case, a is 0 and b is pi. And you've got the magnitude of the tangent vector integrated. So in this case, what's this? It's equal to a constant. That's kind of nice, isn't it? So 
So all I need to do is just... There you go. You've got to like that. Okay? No messy square roots to worry about, no nasty integrals. It just falls out. Any questions? That's why we love these hel uh, helices, because they, they do exactly what we want them to do.